Good morning. Welcome to Fiber Town. I am Emily. This is episode 64. It is May 1st, 2014. It is Beltane. If you celebrate. Um, it's May Day and I'm here with Alice and we have just come out from under three solid days of rain and flash floods and Alice was terrified because of the thunder. So I had to snuggle her. She's got a little lipstick stain down here. But she's happy now. She spent some time in the sunshine outside today, so. Right, Al? Did you go ahead and sit outside? Yeah. We said a squirrel come up to the um, to the screen door this morning. And it's the first we've seen in a while. We've had such a hard winter. And um, Alice had a cow when she saw the squirrel. Uh, yeah, there was a squirrel. And I think the winter's been so long that they've just forgotten that there's a vicious killer that lives here. So she is in the process of basically letting them know again. So yeah, so Alice, why don't you go outside and make sure the squirrels stay away. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. Oh my goodness, all right. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Crafty Knitter 7, who is Sue from Canada. She is one half of the Two Tangled Skeins podcast. Also welcome to Scarves Etc., who is Nicole from Northern Virginia. Um, she is originally, she started out as a crocheter, and now she knits more than she ever thought she would, and that's exactly how it was for me. My, my granny, my great-grandmother taught me to crochet as a kid, and then I took it up again when I was pregnant with my son, and started hanging around knitters, and wanted to make all the cool things they made, plus all the cool things on Ravelry. So. The rest is history. Um, we possibly met at Shenandoah, but uh, it's a while ago. It's a, it was a whirlwind. So um, yes, indeed, I wanted to put out a very short podcast today. Um, it is Thursday, Saturday. I leave at the crack of dawn for Maryland Sheep and Wool. It is my, I think it's really my highlight of the year. I love it. I love it. I love it. I look forward to it. I plan for it. So I'm very excited. I'm gearing up. I have a, a sort of a staging table where I put, I think of something I want to bring with me or have with me and I put it there. And so the staging is underway, has been for about a week. Um, we have an autism craft along going on till the end of May. And I wanted to show you guys um, another prize that came in. I'm super excited about this. I, I first saw these at Maryland, at Maryland, at the Homespun Yarn Party in Maryland. And these are by a little teapot designs. There we go. And the Etsy shop is a little teapot designs at you know at Etsy. And this is Anne, and she is a spinner of art yarns and beautiful hand spun yarns. And she has this shop, and it at, um, at the Homespun Yarn Party, I took a picture of these, and I meant to buy some, but I didn't. And then, this is sort of the magic of social media, I posted a picture on Instagram and said, with a hashtag, Homespun Yarn Party, and said, does anyone know who made these? I meant to buy some, but I forgot. But I had taken that picture. So here they are. This is a prize for the Autism Craft Along. These are three amazing beehive home um, art yarn hand spun necklaces. Look at that. There are three of them. You see, I'm wearing I'm wearing three right now, and they are hooked together. You can wear them as bracelets. You can wear them. They come in sets of three. You can wear them as bracelets. You can wear them as chokers. You can take them apart, do what you want with it. But it's one long strand, and she has these really really cool clasps that are, okay, let's just take one out, they come out really easily, very well attached, and they go back in like that, super easy, look at the colors, there's one, love this one, has a little bit of pink, yellow, blue, some greens, ugh, there's some reds, and little mauvey purples, more blues. It's super fun. So I've just, I got these, 
yesterday or the day before and I've been playing around with them. Um, my daughter wants them. I'm like, nope, you're not having this. Look at that. So much fun. And it's a really cool way to wear yarn. And I'm so thrilled that she was able to, to donate a prize. So one of you lucky knitters, spinners, crafters, came in these cute little bags, will win a set of three from Little Teapot. Now, she generously sent also a lotion ba, all natural skin nourishing body lotion. And this has beeswax, organic coconut butter, mango butter, which is yum, um, non-GMO verified avocado oil, sweet almond oil, rice bran oil, and pure essential oils. Let me open this up. It's such an interesting mixture of, I, for me, the dominant scents are mango and honey. That must be from the beeswax. Look, it comes in this cute little tin. And, oh, it's a sheepy. So this is a lotion bar. You just take it out. Your hand, the warmth of your hands melts it, softens it, and you rub it where you need it. So, lotion ba. Some lucky, lucky crafter will win these two together. And that's from a little teapot. Check it out on Etsy because she has amazing yarns. She has these amazing necklaces and now these lotion bars. Ba like the sheep, get it? All right, um, we have, it's May 1st, so we have a drawing for sheep and, for sheep and wool. Sheep and wool in the brain. We have a drawing for the April FO thread, and we have between two and 232 entries. That thread is closed. The May thread is now open, so put things in there as well as the Autism Craft Along thread if that works for you. Um, and the winner was number 91, who is Julie No Jewels Jukes. Get in touch with me. And let me know, I, I'm assuming your name is Julie, let me know uh, which pattern you would like, and that can be up to $7. Yay, congrats! Yay! Alrighty, um, I have no FOs. I've been pretty darn monogamous, not totally, I have, I have two loves right now. I have my second shield maiden, oh, well, I'll talk more about that later, and, well, and I have my bare branches, but let's do shield maiden first, shall we? Um, I got a little, I went to, my husband is a, a teacher administrator at a school in DC, and I went to, the whole family went to see the musical, um, which was Guys and Dolls, on Saturday night, so I got a ton of knitting done, and we were towards the front of the theater, so I had decent lighting. So here is my second Shield Maiden. It is out of Handspun Shetland, two-ply. Um, from Metaselt, more at Shetland, so a naturally reddish brown. And I, it's, you know, it's definitely more uneven than, say, a commercial yarn would be, but I love how it's coming out. There's the beginning of the Lucette eyelet pattern right there. And thank you guys for purchasing, queuing, favoriting Shield Maiden. I really appreciate it. Um, I think you're gonna have fun knitting it. One of my test knitters has already knit too. And they're beautiful. Um, so, oh gosh, I think I have knit some sparkle into it. <laughs> That's kind of incongruous with a with a Shetland. Where is it? There it is. Some purple. See that purple sparkle? You can see a little sparkling. Um, it's just fun to knit. You knit first, and it's fun to wear. You knit this long strip cables of cables and slip stitches and I have you slip a stitch you slip all your stitches pearlize and that gives you a nice edge on the garter side see that and it gives you a nice edge from which to pick up there that's what the um, the pickup edge looks like on the back so it's very tidy um, and then it's just it's it's fast it's very fast and fun to knit so I think you guys are gonna like it I hope you do um, to be safe, I'm recommending 360 yards of a DK, and you're gonna get different results depending on what different blends you have in your yarn. Um, it's knit at a 
at a little bit of a, lar a looser gauge. Ooh, sorry about that. A looser gauge um, to give some drape. The Shetland, I don't think is gonna be very drapey. Not as drapey as the Superwash wool, for example, that I knit the other sample from. Um, that's really stretchy and drapey. Um, something with a silk content would be lovely. Alpaca would be lovely. Um, I think this is great for hand spun as long as you can get 350 yards. Now this is 330 yards and this is what I have left. I'm almost done with the eyelet pattern and the short rows. So if I run out of yarn on this one, the top of the pattern is garter. There are five, six rows of garter and then a bind off. So if I feel like I'm running out of yarn, I will do fewer garter rows and hope for the best. So there are ways to play around with this pattern, but if you want to do it as written, I would recommend 360 yards of a DK, just to be safe. Um, so the promotion goes until this Friday uh, at midnight. Sorry, Alice is drinking from a puddle outside. Al, Blah. the birds poop there, don't do that. Um, Anyway, go and get it if you like it. It's $1 off with Fiber Townies Rock as the coupon code. All right, my other work in progress is this. <laughs> okay, there's my second sleeve. It looks like, okay, it would fit a stick. It's very rolly. There, there we go. Um, let me show you, let me talk all about this pattern. This is the Bare Branches by Alana Dacos. That's how I'm saying that name, Alana Dacos. I know the A's don't match up, the A sounds between the names, that's okay. Um, it's knit in pieces. I'm knitting it out of Plymouth Tweed, 100% wool. It is definitely a tweed. Um, I have noticed that there are some places in this pattern that are too vague. And I'm a ex fairly experienced sweater knitter. There are three places in particular that I think the directions could have been clearer. And in two of those cases, I did not follow the directions. I followed my instincts and I was my instincts were correct. I looked at the, at the pictures, the schematic, and said, that can't be right, and I did it the way I thought it should be done, and it was right. The third instance, I followed the pattern, and I was smarter than the pattern. I should have known. In those other two instances, it worked. But I had never knit a hood before. So I said, I'll just, I'll do what the pattern says. Nope. And I'll show you where, where that ended up biting me in the butt. Okay, so I have one side seamed up meaning I have one sleeve set in. It's pretty good. It's not blocked yet. There's the lovely cable. Um, this, the sleeve is set in. The sleeve is seamed using mattress stitch. And the side is seamed right there. You can see the seam. It needs some, it needs some tweaking. A couple of bunchy places. Mattress seam is so awesome, though. Um, if you get it at the right angle, you can sort of you don't have to pull as you go. You don't have to pull the fabric, two sides of the fabric tight as you go. But you can, um, sorry, a visitor. You can pull the, the yarn you're seaming with at an angle, sort of down and at an angle, maybe a 30 degree angle. And it'll just, shh, it'll just hitch up those two sides together. I'm not seaming with this wool. I am seaming with this wool. It's not a perfect match, but mattress seam doesn't show. Mattress stitch, rather, it doesn't show. I did a three needle bind off on the shoulders with this because that would show. Um, I kitchenered the hood with this very carefully because it's a woolen spun, very loosely plied, and it's stronger than shelter or loft, but by about 25%. So, my father is here. <laughs> you can hear him. Um, all right. He does the gardening. So I'm using uh, Dream and Color Classy in Happy Forest. And it's a nice, strong worsted spun, worsted weight. Probably at least a three ply, maybe a four ply. 
and it's doing beautifully for the rest of the seaming. So how I'm doing, well, let me show you this first. This has an I-cord edge right there that's knit as you go. And when I was doing the tops of the fronts, the instructions did not say to continue the I-cord. They said knit or purl. Not even continue an established pattern. So I looked at the picture and I was like, you know, here's the hood. The I-cord continues up through the hood. So I'm going to just keep doing the I-cord. And I'm glad I did. <laughs> I would have been ripping out both of my fronts for an inch or two if I had not done that. Um, where was the other part? I don't remember, but the, the part where I did not follow my instincts, and I should have, was at the top of the hood, where it said, this, see this purl ridge? It said to knit a row. It should have said to purl a row. Mm. But I thought, I don't know, maybe there's some, I don't know, putting it all together at the end where it makes sense. Nope. So now I have this pearl ridge, and I've kitchenered the whole darn thing. That's a lot of kitchener to take out, y'all. So let me show you. Half finished. It fits. I think the seaming, remember, it's not blocked. So there's some. There's the seaming of the sleeve. That's where I joined a ball, so that'll be, that'll be tucked in better. But it sits in the right place. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to redo the hood. Darn it. That might be something that I do after the fact. I don't know if I want to touch it right now. It's not The hood's not going to be up, you know, for a while. Ta-da! One side. The other side's just flapping in the breeze here. And there's the back. There's the hood. It doesn't completely cover the tree. So that's lovely. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a really nice sweater when it's done. I'm pretty happy. So I've knit this on size eights, except for, that's US eights, it's five millimeters, except for the top of the sleeves where I changed to a US nine. I don't know if you can tell the difference, probably not. US nine is 5.5 um, millimeters. Um, this used a lot of yarn. The hood used one whole ball plus. So, and the balls are 109 yards. I think I have one and a half balls, two and a half balls left. I need to look. So, for the rest of the day, I'll be seaming the other side up and then deciding what I want to do about the hood. I might just leave it be because I'm thinking going out for dinner with some friends um, Saturday night at Maryland Sheep and Wool, and it's going to be chilly. It's getting to the 40s or 50s here at night, at least. So it's only going to be 65 for a high that day. So I'm thinking I could wear that as a coat, as a jacket, because it really is a coat. So I want to show you my little tip for seaming, especially setting in sleeves. Um, what I do, and these are hair clips, see? Little teensy tiny hair clips. Keep your hair out of your face. All right, let me show you with this black one. Easy to buy at the grocery store or the drugstore. There we go. So I take my sleeve top and I find, I fold it in half along the bound off edges. And I fold it lengthwise like this. And I see where they meet up, that is the middle. I want to join that spot to the top middle of my uh, shoulder, my shoulder seam. So I put a little clip there, or you can put a, a, like a darning needle through it. There's a lot going on today in the neighborhood. Um, so then I have it marked. That's the spot I need to mat line up to the top of my shoulder seam. I'm gonna take my shoulder seam and all these ends make it kind of hard to handle this. But there it is. That's the three needle bind off for the shoulders right there. So I follow it down to the edge. 
And I don't have to mark that because it's really easy to see because of the seam of the bind off. And I match the two spots together and clip them. Doesn't damage the fabric. And then I take and clip along and clip along here. So I know that when I'm seaming, I'm doing it fairly evenly. See? There's the top of the sleeve. And I will actually put these little clips all the way down to where the armpit started. And that will match up where the armpit, armpit is on the body. See? So if you clip that all the way down and do the same on the other side, you're good to go for seaming. This works well for me. Um, maybe it'll work for you. Maybe you already do it. All right. Um, this is the book that I always go to for seaming if I need a refresher. They have a chapter called Finishing School. And I just think it's a great resource. So Finishing School. Learning to sew seams, pick up stitches, and block your work. So. For example, she shows you how to, you know, what each type of seam is good for. Okay, she'll say like, okay, this is for joining a shoulder and a sleeve. This is for seaming up sides. This is for, you know, whatever kind of circumstance you have. This book has never steered me wrong. So, Debbie Stoller for the win. I've had this book forever. It's a good one. Um, so that, my friends, is The Bare Branches. You might see me wearing it at Sheep and Wool if it's freezing. Probably not. But I, uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So, yay. All right. Um, spinning. I, I might as well show you this. I've shown it most of it to you already. But this is my hand-dyed BFL silk two-ply from Three Waters Farm. I got it undyed. I dyed it myself. I felted it a bit. So I carded it. I drum carded it. And I spun it. And it's a very kind of a marly lavender purple. It's just under 600 yards. Uh, it's heavier than its originally original intended purpose. But do I want to knit a lace sweet gigantic burka? No. I might see what I can do with 600 yards of a sport DK. I don't know. It would be an awesome child sweater. This is going to go in my stash, and I'll think about that tomorrow. My hand spun stash. It's getting kind of large. I need to knit more hand spun. Um, I'm nervous about being separated from my stash. I have to say, tangent, when I'm out of town this summer for six weeks, I know I'm going to overpack my yarn. Sorry, my hair is crazy. I'm going to overpack yarn. But there's just no way to predict exactly what you're going to need. <sighs> Maybe I should make, start a barn raising quilt and knit those little squares all summer. I don't know. We'll talk more about that in a future episode. Um, Ask Fibertown. How, oh my gosh, I've been talking for over 20 minutes. Okay, Ask Fibertown. Alrighty. Who asked me this one? I forgot to write it down. Let me check. The May FO thread is up already. Did I say that? Oh, hey, y'all want to see what our prize winner knit? She knit some really, really beautiful socks. There they are. They're called Heather socks. I don't know if that's the pattern name or what she's calling them, but they're adorable. Okay, um, Ask Fiber Town. This was about, this is Jenny Heiss 56. What are your most used and or favorite finished objects? All right, I made a list. My most used are probably my Albers cowl, which is also one of my favorites because I spun it and I had so much fun spinning it. And that was all spun from Gourmet Stash Poonies. Um, and then my Breezy Cardi. I think hands down, it's a Hannah Fettig pattern, hands down I wear that the most. One of the reasons 
is the yarn. It is Volmiza Lace Garn. It is a 1700 yard ball of yarn, hand dyed in Germany. I bought mine sight unseen in a frenzy uh, before she had a better website. She didn't always have pictures of the yarns, but I had to have some. So I bought it sight unseen, no picture. No, not even a colorway name. And it was a weird different. So if she has dyed a regular color and it comes out a bit different, she calls it a weird different. This was a weird different golden pear. So it's kind of a neutral, but it has some oomph to it. Um, it is now drying in the sun. I was washing some sweaters today that I that needed it. That I don't wash my sweaters often, but um, I feel like at the end of the season I should sort of get the body oils out of them so they don't attract moths as readily because moths are attracted to lanolin and human and dirt and body oils. There's got to be a better way to say that. You know what I mean. Um, so I wear it constantly, constantly. A lot of people say that the Volmiza yarn is ropey or cottony or um, splitty or they don't like it. Let me tell you, it holds up like nobody's business. Nobody's business. Um, that sweater is about two years old now. I wear it three out of four seasons. It's lightweight, so it's very wearable. And I would encourage you guys, it took me a year to knit it, but it's been worth it. And it was worth the, um, you know, when I clicked buy, I was like, oh, $33, that's nothing. Yeah, that was euros. It was a momentary brain lapse on my part. But still, that's 50 some dollars, um, and I'm including shipping in that, 50 some dollars for a sweater. So that's not bad, and I've gotten amazing use out of it, and it looks brand new, brand new. It gets used, I don't know, I probably wear it three times a week. It's just a throw over everything. So, gosh, if I talked that up enough, that was the Breezy Cardi and it's drying. Otherwise, I'd show you, but go look on my project page. I also love my Hero sweater and my hand-spun socks. There they are. And um, probably the object that gets the second most use that I have made, it is crocheted. And it is the Babette blanket. It is out of Noro Kurion. It is. It fits on my queen-size bed and it is unbelievable. It's, it washes up so soft. This guy this got a bath, um, look at all the colors, so much fun. Um, he got a bath a few weeks ago and it softens more every time I wash it. And this is, I made this when my LYS was still open. Um, it was called With Yarn in Front. And, you know, a skein of Noro runs about $10, right? So every time, not every time, but often when I'd go, I'd pick up a skein. Didn't have to worry about dye lots um, or matching anything. Every time I had an extra 10 bucks, I'd get a skein of Noro and crochet some squares. And my friend Leanne gave me a bunch of her Noro. I think this is a colorway she gave me. And I could get four, look at that, I have to rejoin some of the, the seaming this thing was a beast. There's a little hole right there. This is probably four years old. It's held up very well. So over the years, I collected those skeins of Noro and I was gifted some from my friend Angie and my friend Leanne. And at the end of it, I estimate it took about 30 skeins of Noro. So if you think about buying all like $300 worth of yarn all at once, yes, that's too much. But as a progressive thing, it was not too much and it was money very well spent. And Noro is so much fun to work with. Um, and I kind of think this is an heirloom. I love it. I absolutely love it. I could get these giant squares. You could get maybe one, one giant square and two small squares, because there are teeny tiny squares in there as well, out of one ball of Noro, and that's just over 100 yards as well. Um, so, and you don't have to weave in that many ends because 
you can crochet over your ends and since it's self striping or self color you know you know what I mean not striping but you know what I mean about Noro um, there's you don't have those typical granny square color changes to deal with and all those extra ends to weave in so it's epic and it gets good use so that is it can't believe I talked for a half hour this was supposed to be like a 10 minute 15 minute show excuse me guess where I'll be this weekend you didn't know did you so if you see me please say hi ask for a pin a button um, put in your autism craft along things um, yeah I get so excited this time of year I have to go to the bank with my bag o change and have it put it in the coin star and get my dollars <laughs> don't forget shield maiden is on sale till Friday midnight um, with the code fiber townies rock and you guys do and I hope I get to meet lots of you this weekend I'm so looking forward to it the podcaster meetup is at 1 30 in the lower corral and that is if you go down the main drag where all the food is and you go all the way to the end almost all the way to the end towards the sheepdog trials there's a field with some stands and you can watch those doggies do their thing um, off to the right as you're headed that way there are vendors and it's called the lower corral and there's a lot of open space um, if it's real sunny you might you know don't forget the sunscreen or a hat because um, there's no shade there I don't think it'll be hot though 65 or so for the high so it should be perfect except for the muddy ground just saying bring something to sit on um, a plastic bag <laughs> at the very least because the seating's not great there and if you want to sit on Spinner's Hill and have lunch and watch the um, and spin and watch the sheep shearing you're gonna need something dry um, but anyway Lower Corral is where the podcaster meetup is at 1.30, and if I don't see you there, I hope you just say hi during the day. I'll be there both days, so yay! If you are not coming to Sheep and Wool, you can live vicariously through me on Instagram. I'm sure I'll be Instagramming a lot, and th um, through our next episode where my husband will have another Sheep and Wool movie, as he did last year. So lots of footage, um, and it should be great gonna see lots of friends and meet some new friends okay you guys take care I'll see you next week bye bye